Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, I wanted to take a look at the new simulation nodes in the beta builds of Blender. You can download these from builder.blender.org under the experimental section. I've been seeing some really cool stuff that people have been doing with these simulation nodes. But one thing that I've been wanting to do with loops is to be able to make a generator node that generates some kind of object. In this case, just vases or cups. And for each iteration of the loop, generates a random version of that. So instead of them being instances of one another, they're actually all separate objects that have been generated one at a time. And now that we have a simulation loop in the beta builds of Blender, we can accomplish this. To show you how powerful this is gonna be, I've made this quick example. So let's jump right into it. So to start off, I'm gonna take a geometry node group that I've put together that's designed just to generate a single vase and you could substitute in any node group that is generative in nature like this. But this one lets me change the height of the vase, the radius, the resolution, how wide the top is, how bulgy the middle is, and then the overall thickness. Up to this point, if I wanted to generate multiple vases in one node tree, I could do something like this, where I would do an instance on points and then instance my object on each of the points. The problem is that geometries are a single item. They're not a field like floats or bools or something like that. So I can't have multiple values coming through this node generating multiple separate instances. All of the instances are the same. Now I could randomize their scale or their position or their rotation, but in essence they're all still going to be the same vase, just distorted. However, the new simulation nodes give us a view into what we will be able to do once looping does come into the main branch of Blender. So here's what we're gonna do. First, we'll add in a simulation output node and a simulation input node and connect our geometry through. Right now, our geometry is just a plane with nine points. The idea now is that for every frame, we want to instance a new vase and each one of those instances will have a random value that's affected by the current frame. So if we move this join geometry up here and then add in our vase, this will take the incoming plane and then add a vase to it and then output that. And it'll keep doing that for each frame. So if we let this run for 100 frames, we would get 100 identical vases right in the middle. But if we go ahead and add an input scene time node, we have access to the frame number. We can now use this frame number to drive other values. The value we want to get is the location of each of the points on our plane. So on frame one, we'll grab vertice zero, frame two, we'll grab vertice one, frame three, we'll grab vertice two, and so on. What I'll do here is I'm going to add a mesh to points node to change my incoming mesh into just a series of points. Now I want to sample each one of those points. So I'll use a geometry sample index node. I want to get the position of each point, so I want to sample a vector. And I'll use the input position node. Now the index that I want to sample is the frame minus one. Because frames start at one, but point indices start at zero. So now we're going to take our vase that we create and we're going to translate it to the position of each point on each frame. So I'll take a geometry, transform geometry node, and I'll plug the position of each point into the transformation of our vase geometry. So now if I run this, I get an identical vase on each vertex. The difference though between this and the instance on points node is that each of these were generated at a separate time. Therefore, I can affect their values one at a time using random values. Let's look how we would do that. If I bring in a utility random value node and plug it into my height and then give the ID some kind of constant value. Well, in this case, the frame is going to be constant for each frame. So when I plug this in, 
Now this line is no longer dashed red. If I put this with a value of say 0.5 to 3, I rewind my animation and I hit play, you'll see I get several different heights. But then I get a whole big stack of them right in the middle of different heights. That's because I haven't put on any kind of end condition for it to stop generating vases. So let's go ahead and do that. So what is my end condition? Well, it's after I've generated a vase for each point. Well, I can find out how many points I have by using an attribute domain size node. Since I'm using a point cloud, I'll choose that and plug in the points. Now I have a value here of the total number of points that I need to generate. So now if I add a switch node right here, before this vase gets attached to my geometry, I can now compare my frame number to the total number of points I want to generate. In this case, I have nine items that I want to generate. So now I can say, if my frame number is less than or equal to my point count, I want to generate a vase. So I'll plug this into the switch and put my vase generator into true. So now if I rewind this and play, you see I get my nine vases and then it stops generating any new ones. Of course, I can also come down here and duplicate this random value node, use the same ID, but change the seed and plug this into a different attribute. And of course, I can keep going with this. Now for the next step, I want to fill in an area with randomly placed vases instead. So if I scale this up, and instead of using a mesh to points node, I use a distribute points on faces node. I'm going to put it in Poisson disk mode, and I'm going to play with my minimum distance. It looks like I'm still getting some intersections here, so I'll increase this a bit more. Rewind and hit play once more. That's looking pretty good. And of course, I could continue to tweak these settings until I was happy with my results. I'll add a set material and add a glass material that I made. So there we go. I could now apply this geometry node and have this as an object in and of itself. Of course, you could use the mesh here that I have as a plane and place this on top of tables, on floors, on shelves, whatever, and then have it randomly generate these vases or whatever else your geometry nodes generate. And it could do all the set dressing for you. Here, I'll show you a quick example. So there, I'm able to decorate the set with all of these different vases just by using a simple plane mesh that I've pushed around into different spots in the scene. Then wherever I've put it, it's going to generate the vases with whatever density that I specified. Anyhow, I hope this tutorial shows you some of the ways you can use the new simulation nodes in the beta builds of Blender, and what we have to look forward to as soon as static loops are also introduced. If you're interested in these source files, they'll be available on my Patreon to my Patreon subscribers. Speaking of which, are super awesome, and I'm super grateful for all of their support. So anyway, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.